you mentioned space repetition. So what, um, do you like this process? Maybe can you explain it? Oh yeah. yeah. If I'm trying to memorize something, let's say if I have an hour to memorize as many Spanish words as I can, if I just try to do like half an hour and then I, later in the day I do half an hour, I won't retain that information as long as if I do half an hour today and half an hour one week from now. And so doing that extra spacing mm -hmm. should help me retain the information better. Now, there's an interesting boundary condition, which is it depends on when you need that information. So many of us, you know, for me, like I, I can't remember so much from college and high school because I crammed because I just did everything at the last minute. And sometimes I would literally study like, you know, in the hallway right before the test. And it was great because what would happen is, is I just had that information right there. And so actually not spacing can really help you if you need it very quickly, right? But the problem is, is that you tend to forget it later on. But on the other hand, if you space things out, you get a benefit for later on retention. And so there's many different explanations. We have a computational model of this. It's currently under revision. Um, but in our computer model, what we say is, is that an easy, maybe a good way of thinking about this is this conversation that you and I are having, it's associated with a particular context, a particular place in time. And so all these little cues that are in the background, these little guitar sculptures that you have and that big light umbrella thing, right? All these things are part of my memory for what we're talking about, the content. So now later on, you're sitting around and you're at home drinking a beer and you're thinking, God, what a strange interview that was, right? So now you're trying to remember it, but the context is different. So your current situation doesn't match up with the memory that you pulled up. There's error. There's a mismatch between what you pulled up and your current context. And so in our model, what you start to do is you start to erase or alter the parts of the memory that are associated with a specific place and time, and you heighten the information about the content. And so if you remember this information in different times and different places, it's more accessible at different times in different places because it's not overfitted That's in a in an AI kind of way of thinking about things. It's not overfitted to one particular context. But that's also why the memories that we call upon the most also feel kind of like they're just things that we read about almost. You don't vividly reimagine them, right? It's like they're <laughs> just these things that yeah. just come to us like facts, right? Yeah. And it's a little bit different than semantic memory, but it's like basically they, these events that we have recalled every, you know, over and over and over again, we keep updating that memory so it's less and less tied to the original experience. But then we have those other ones, which it's like you just get a reminder of that very specific context. You smell something, you hear a song, you see a place that you haven't been to in a while, and boom, it just comes back to you. And that's the exact opposite of what you get with spacing, right? That's so fascinating. So uh, with space repetition, one of its powers is that you lose attachment to a particular context, but then it loses the, the intensity of the flavor of the memory. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. That's so interesting. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, it becomes stronger in the sense that the content becomes stronger. Yeah, so it's used for uh, for learning languages, for learning facts, for learning for but you know for that generic semantic information type of memories. Yeah, and and I think this this falls into a category we've done other modeling. Um, one of these is a published study in PLOS computational biology, where we show that uh, another way, which is I think related to the spacing effect is what's called the testing effect. So uh, the idea is, is that if you're trying to learn words, uh, let's say in Spanish or something like that, and this doesn't have to be words, it could be anything, you test yourself on the words and that act of testing yourself helps you retain it better over time than if you just studied it, right? And so from traditional learning theories, uh, some learning theories anyway, this seems weird, why would you do better giving yourself this extra error from testing yourself rather than just, you know, giving yourself perfect input that's a replica of what it is that you're trying to learn. And I think the reason is, is that you get better retention from that error, that mismatch that we talked about, right? So what's happening in our model, it's actually conceptually kind of similar to what happens with backprop in uh, AI, so the, or neural networks. And so the idea is, is that you expose 
here's the bad connections and here's the good connections. And so we can keep the, the parts of the cell assembly that are good for the memory and lose the ones that are not so good. But if you don't stress test the memory, you haven't exposed it to the error fully. And so that's why I think this is kind of, this is a thing that I come back to over and over again, is that you will retain information better if you're constantly pushing yourself to your limit, right? If you are feeling like you're coasting, then you're actually not learning. So it's like- <laughs> so you should always be stress testing the memory system. Yeah, and feel good about it. You know, even though everyone tells me, oh, my memory's terrible, in the moment, they're overconfident about what they'll retain later on. So it, it's fascinating. And so what happens is, is when you test yourself, you're like, oh my God, I thought I knew that, but I don't. And so it can be demoralizing until you get around that and you realize, hey, this is the way that I learn. This is this is how I learn best. It's like if you're trying to, you know, star in a movie or something like that, you don't just sit around reading the script. You actually act it out and you're going to botch those lines from time to time, right? 